Hey, what is up everyone? So in this video, I want to talk about Mysteries and Sea of Thieves. So Mysteries was one of the things that was announced when Adventures was announced, and it was supposed to be this next big thing that they were going to do in the game. The first one we had revolved around the death of DeMarco, which was a little bit of a stinging one because when they announced this, it was also around the same time they announced the arena was closing. So it's like, not only did they kill the arena in real life, but they also like, in the game lore, killed off the person that was in charge of the arena. So it was kind of an interesting one. And that first mystery was a good test run, and I think there's some good parts of it, and then there were some bad parts of it, which we'll get into in a little bit. But then we also had another mystery that came the year after, with the Hoarder's Hunt mystery. Both of these were interesting, and I think some of the problems that were done in the DeMarco mystery were resolved in the Hoarder's Hunt mystery, but then the Hoarder's Hunt mystery had its own problems that we can talk about. And then I kind of want to talk about if we'll ever see mysteries again, and what they should do to make it work better if they were to try for a third time. Part of me feels like the mysteries are going to be done since we saw the death of adventures earlier this year. We probably would have seen another mystery happen earlier around the spring or early summertime. And since we haven't seen that, you know, we're almost to the end of summer, we probably aren't having any more mysteries. That's not to say that maybe next year we get another one, who knows, but... Let's go ahead and take a look at the very first mystery and see what it did well and what it didn't do well. So with the death of DeMarco, I thought this had a really good setup. It was kind of similar to what we see now with the game, where it's like stuff was changing in the world. But for me personally, I think it was a little bit easier to follow than some of the stuff that happens now in game. Now in game, you might see a place where it has like a few rocks that were moved around or something, and then you have to try to figure out, oh, this means this and this and this are happening. Whereas with the death of DeMarco, you were able to see his skeleton on Sea Dog's Rest. You were able to find the lost chest in the water near there that had the lantern in it. You were able to use that to find messages that would show up in the game. So it was a little bit more straightforward. It wasn't all the way like the adventures where that was like really straightforward where, where you got cinematic trailers that even helped you fill in the gaps of the story. This was a little bit like of an in-between I think where it was more direct than just what they were doing before but it wasn't all the way like the adventures were. So I think it actually did fit well. With these mysteries, they usually involve doing stuff both in the game as well as outside the game. So there'd be like hints and teasers and stuff that would be posted on social media and other places. And you have to use those to find what you need to find in game. And I think that's where it breaks down a little bit for me with the mysteries. I think the mysteries would work better when everything is within the context of the game itself. Anytime you do stuff outside of the game, I think you lose a lot of the player base and only a handful of people are going to stay involved with it. I know for me personally, it was kind of difficult to keep track of everything and I was making the video recaps for everyone. And even me, I was just like, this is getting a little bit too convoluted at this point to have to like go to all these different websites and stuff. I'd rather just go find the different mysteries inside the game itself. With the DeMarco mystery, it was a bit of a mix of both, so which was nice. So at least, you know, half the time, there was stuff to go do in-game. And the stuff in-game I thought was pretty cool. There's other stuff that happened, like you would take that lantern that we had gone and you'd go to different places in the Sea of Thieves world at different times and you'd raise them up and you'd be able to see different characters interacting with DeMarco. So you're trying to kind of piece together what happened to him. And then later on in the story, we had the whole thing where it was starting to seem like the Pirate Lord was involved and did something with this. And it ended up not being him. I don't know if that was supposed to be a teaser for the Monkey Island stuff that happened later on. Or if it was just a coincidence that they were doing that plotline and then a year later they did the same sort of thing with the Avengers having like a dark version of the Pirate Lord that ended up being LeChuck. Either way, I did think it was interesting. And then the ending of the DeMarco mystery I thought was really good, where you basically went to this siren shrine, and then there was a secret room that you could get into, and if you walked back there you'd be able to see Pirate Lord and DeMarco's sister confronting the person that killed DeMarco, which ended up being the Siren Queen. And I thought it was a cool little interaction. It wasn't like a huge thing, but it was entertaining and it was a nice little wrap up to this mystery. With that said though, I already kind of mentioned one of the problems with this mystery where like a lot of the stuff was outside of the game. So I think a lot of players just kind of fell by the wayside with that because once you moved to outside of the game, a lot of people just aren't as interested anymore. The other thing that I think was the biggest problem with the mystery was it just ran for too long. They basically had the whole mystery running from May of that year till September. So throughout the entire summer and a little bit more. So to me, that was a bit too long for all of this. I think it should have been a lot shorter, maybe, you know, like a month or two, 
or even just throughout a season at least that would have been you know made a little bit more sense it was just way too long for players i think it got a little bit too convoluted as it went along and a lot of players just lost interest in it despite it having a really good ending when we get to the following year with the hoarder's hunt i think they fix this a little bit by making it only a month long for this mystery the problem with this mystery was the story wasn't as interesting there was this, you know, mysterious character called H and stuff, had to do with the gold hoarders and everything, and that was intriguing to a point, but it didn't do the stuff in-game like what the DeMarco Mystery did. With the DeMarco Mystery, we got to see cool things that we haven't really seen in Sea of Thieves before, like, like the ghostly figures showing, like, DeMarco talking to these different individuals, or finding DeMarco's skeleton on Sea Dog's Rest. Those different things really made it feel like it was a real story that was happening in the game. With the Hoarder's Hunt, it didn't feel that way. The way that the Hoarder's Hunt worked is basically you'd have a riddle that was provided on the Sea of Thieves website, and you'd have to figure that out. Sometimes that would take you out to other things to piece stuff together. It was a bit difficult, I think, for the puzzles. You'd really have to be into like solving these kind of puzzles, which might not necessarily align fully with the Sea of Thieves player base. I know for me personally, I kind of looked at some of them. I tried to do them at the very beginning. I was just like, nope, I'm not doing this. And I ended up just waiting for someone else to solve the riddle so that I could do the second part, which was in the game. So the Hoarder's Hunt basically had the riddle first, they had to solve. Once you solved it on the Steve Thieves website, you were able to access the quest in game and you can complete that. And if you've done a certain amount of them, you get different things in game, which was pretty cool. You are able to get like a little trinket. And then the other one was a Gold Hoarder Skull as a trinket. So both of those are pretty cool rewards. I think the rewards for the Hoarder's Hunt were better than the original DeMarco Mystery but I just feel like it wasn't as engaging for me personally. These voyages that they sent us on weren't really anything unique. They didn't really have any like story implications and it was just very fetch questy. It just was a simple voyage. It didn't have anything interesting with it. So I think that was a major disappointment for me personally. Really the best things they did with the Hoarder's Hunt was the rewards. The rewards were pretty nice and if you were someone that was engaged with all the puzzles, there was an actual gold hoarder skull, like a physical one that was actually made of gold that you could win. So that was pretty cool for the people that got that. And for the rest of us in-game, getting those trinkets I thought were pretty cool. I, you know, it's a nice one. It's not like just some junky cosmetic that no one really cares about. The other thing they did really well, like I already mentioned, was just how long it took. Having this only last a month made it so a lot more people could stay engaged with it. But where it fails, I think the Marco one succeeds, is just with the storytelling. The story with the Porter's Hunt wasn't really interesting at all. The reveal at the end was so unremarkable that honestly I don't even really remember it off the top of my head and I don't really have much interest to go find out because it really had no impact on anything. I feel like both of these mysteries failed for very different reasons and I think if they took the lessons they learned from both of these and tried mysteries for a third time I actually think they would be pretty successful with it. If they were to do this again I think one, you have good rewards tied to it that make it, you know, viable for a lot of players to play because a lot of players are only interested in getting cosmetics in the game. They don't really care like what you have to do to get them. So make sure you have the good cosmetics there and it doesn't have to be much. The trinkets from the Hoarder's Hunt were great. And I think the additional stuff that we got with the DeMarco mystery where we found the lantern that actually had a role in the mystery, those were pretty cool too. We also need to keep this short. I think the max that you should go is the length of a season so if you want to have a mystery that's running throughout a season i think that would be fine I, it would be even really cool for season 14 honestly if we had like some kind of mystery that went along with the sneaky theme of the season with you know the tricksters and the mayhem and all that stuff i don't think we're going to see that but i do think it's a good example of having a mystery that's tied to the season theme and then they can kind of go together in the length of the mystery the next thing they need to do is learn from the demarco mystery don't make it so that players have to go outside of the game to be able to discover what's going on with the story. Make the stuff happen in-game like Rare is really good at. I think they've done a great job with some of these in-game changes in the past, and I think if they focus really heavily on that and not have the mystery outside of the game, it will do really well. And then finally, just make sure it has a great conclusion and actually has an impact in the game story, because the Hoarder's Hunt had no impact in the story whatsoever, and then while the Marco mystery didn't really have an impact following the mystery, I think it was more of a conclusion to DeMarco's story, and it kind of gave an in-game reason why the arena isn't there anymore. So 
while it may not have consequences following the Mark of Mystery, I think it was a nice way to wrap up the arena story. But that covers my thoughts on Mysteries and Sea of Thieves. I think it was a good idea with bad execution, and I think if Rare can learn from these two mysteries that they've already done, I think they can be really successful with this type of storytelling. That's all I have for this video. Let me know in the comments below. Did you like either of these mysteries? What are your thoughts on mysteries in general? And what would you like to see from Sea of Thieves in the future? That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, y'all.